Hello everybody, my name is Jeff H. Mellum and welcome to the introductory lecture of this uh, lecture series, which is called British Literature. Um, before we come to some actual content and some information for you, of what we are actually going to um, deal with, let me briefly introduce you to myself and to some technical details. Um, I think I will just start with myself real quick. As I said before, my name is Jeff H. Mellum. No doctor, no professor, no whatever. Just call me Mr. Mellum or call me Jeff or whatever you wish to call me. Um, I was born in 1997 in Germany, where I'm also a student um, of the English and German language as well as literary studies and, uh, to some extent, cultural studies. Um, in my free time, I'm an author. Um, I'm writing novels under the name of Jeff H. Mellon. Uh, this channel is mostly about that, actually. And uh, I have so far published three books of the Backfire series, but I'm also working on something else. Now, so much about me. Uh, let's get to some technical details before we come to the lecture. Uh, as you can see, the quality of this video, as well as the sound and the lightning, is uh, currently not uh, the very best. I'm trying to work on that so that we have an experience that is best for all of us. Um, I will mostly write here like this, while well, I will try to write uh, so that everybody can read it, but I will also provide a PowerPoint presentation that serves as some kind of script. So you can download this as a PDF file uh, in the description below, and uh, you can like print it, or if you have a tablet or whatever, you can just, well, make your own notes and uh, marks on that PDF file. Um, all the information that I give you um, verbally and on here will be in the PDF file as well. The file, by the way, the, the presentation, the kind of PowerPoint presentation, script, whatever, will look like this. And I'm also currently thinking about integrating it into the lecture to some extent so that some things that have some more information uh, will be like displayed here instead of me writing or just talking. But apart from that, I really, really recommend that you use the PDF file while watching the lecture because I will not write down everything I say. Um, so it's easier to follow what I'm talking about if you have uh, the PDF file open and it's easier to remember if you make yourself some uh, notes. By the way, um, this introductory lecture might have some cuts in between, but all the other lectures will, or at least I, I try to make them a one take so uh, that it really feels more like a lecture. And, by the way, this here is more to be seen really as some kind of lecture stuff. So how you would actually experience it if you were, for example, uh, studying these topics in university. And uh, so this is not if you are like already studying it and you just want a specific topic in a nutshell, then this is probably not your thing. This is more to well, to really get into literary analysis and um, yeah, if you missed the lecture, maybe you can gather those informations here um, to the same extent that you would get it in university. I also want to add real quick that there is a whole lecture course for this lecture series. This is where you also find uh, the script PDF file. Uh, the link is in the video description below and uh, the page is password protected and I will show you the password. It is jhm underscore blit21. Um, everything is in capital letters except for the I and the T. 
Now, before I tell you a little more about why all of this and what my idea is behind this and what my goals are for you, let me um, show you the, well, so to say, the syllabus for this um, lecture series. So um, that you can decide whether or not this is something that you might need or that is, well, interesting or not for you. By the way, note that this is about uh, British literature. I will uh, talk about that later again. But there will also be a liter um, lecture series about other literature. So American literature, for example. But um, I did not want to put this all together. However, I will uh, talk about this later again. Now, first of all, as you can see, we will start with an introduction, which is today. So, um, yeah, we speak about what we will deal with and why all of this is happening. I hope you can read this. Um, as I said before, I'm currently working on, well, trying to, to well, get to know all of this. This is news to me as well. And, um, yeah. I will probably, if everything goes well, have a better camera and a better audio set up in time. But I think it's not too important today, just to get an idea of what we're dealing with. Um, because after this introduction, we will have one lecture about British literary periods. So we will, before going into detail, uh, gather some information, can you see it? I think I'll go over here, um, about how literature developed over time in the British context. So we are starting quite early, actually almost as early as you can, and going from there to now. Uh, that means that this literature uh, series, by the way, uh, lecture series, sorry, um, will take a little longer. So, um, this is not over in a month. This will probably go for a long time, depending on how regularly these will come. And this also depends on your interest. Um, and we will also speak about your interest uh, after the syllabus. So, after we have dealt with, in general, what British literary periods there are and what are some basic uh, characteristics about it, we will go into detail. And this will be the main part of this lecture series. So week by week, we will go into detail with every British literary period. And uh, yeah, we will do some literary analysis on two to three uh, examples per period. There will at least be one lecture per period, but it will most likely be more than one lecture per period. I'm also currently thinking about um, doing only one literary analysis example per, peer, uh, per, per lecture, so that uh, there would probably be two to three lectures for each uh, British literary period. And um, as you can guess, if you already know what uh, periods there are, if you don't, don't worry, next lecture will be about that. Um, this will take a while. There will be some lectures, like uh, probably somewhat around at least 20. I think, I think 20 would be, or let's say something around, I don't know, 16 to 24. That range sounds about right. Now, after we have dealt with all the periods there are in the British context, um, we will have time for questions, revision, some tasks, and of course, the conclusion. So the last two to three uh, lectures will be yeah, more about um, going through difficult things again and answering questions that have occurred over time. Maybe some of these questions will instantly be answered, like um, if we are currently within the Romantic period and under the first of those lectures there's going to be a question, 
then maybe I, I might answer it in the second or third if it fits. Um, however, if it fits more into this revision area, then, then we will see it here. But um, at the current point of time, point in time, I'm not too sure about uh, how this last part will look like, but I will definitely have some tests, some mock exams, so to say, for you. And maybe connecting it to Patreon, maybe there will be some opportunities for some of you to actually have some, some kind of mock oral exams uh, with me as your, um, um, as your examiner. Now, once we are done with that, um, basically the lecture series is, is over. However, this will be not completely over because I have a plan on going on like almost forever. <laughs> this will be, all of this will be to provide a general understanding of literary analysis in the context of British literature uh, within all the literary periods. Um, if you are studying that in university, for example, then this will be enough, this will suffice for you to get through your exam, most likely. Um, and uh, yeah, you will have the most, the most basic, the most important knowledge. However, literary analysis, um, to the extent that we are dealing with in this lecture series, is something that is very interesting and it's lots of fun if you are really into it. So after actually concluding all of this, we will start anew by going through additional examples. And those can be everything, anything, with no order at all. So we might, I might, I might collect some ideas from you of which books, which novels or whatever you are interested in and we will go through them, no matter from which period they are. Of course we will put them into context with these periods, but um, we might not go through the same order as in the main part of this lecture series. So this will more like be, yeah, additional. Um, for example, when I had an oral exam about this kind of British literary analysis, um, my exam was about 10 texts, 10 literature, literature texts, and only five of them had to be from the lecture or the seminar context, and I was allowed to choose five own examples. But of course, if I did this, then I would have to analyze them in this context on my own. And um, I realized that this is quite funny, actually. It, it is fun. Um, so, yeah, we will do this all together with uh, thousands of examples, if you wish. Okay, now that we have dealt with uh, the syllabus, so to say, I will not add dates. I, I can say this is now, right? Um, but uh, later, much later, not too soon. That's all I can say about when this will uh, come. But I am planning on doing one of these lectures at least once per month. I would love to do them once per week but uh, since I have lots to do, and uh, this is not my job here, this is completely free, by the way, free, so if you want to support me, Patreon, Jeff H. Mellum, of course, this is not obligatory. Um, so yeah, I cannot say when they come, but I will try my best to, um, well, let them come regularly. Now, some of you, who might not have any idea about literary analysis or literature in general, may it be British or not, might have the question now, what is literature? However, we will not deal 
with this question in detail in this lecture because it's quite a complex question. However, if you wish to know more about it, we um, might uh, make an extra lecture about that if it is requested. So please feel free to put it in the comment section below uh, if you wish to go through that in detail. But to give you a general overview of um, what kind of literature we will deal with and what literature is in our lecture uh, context, so uh, we will deal with um, fictional and eventually written down texts in its uh, many forms. So we will not cover nonfiction, we will not cover speeches, songs, and letters or uh, whatever. We will deal with um, fiction, eventually written down fiction. And this should actually suffice as a definition of literature for this lecture for now. But as I said before, if you're interested in uh, knowing a little more about that, we can talk about it in an additional lecture. Now, what about the scope? What exactly are we going to deal with in this lecture? First of all, as I said before, and as also the lecture series name gives away, it is British literature. So literature of British origin or literature that is closely related and connected to the British Isles. Um, that would be, for example, if it is actually part of American literature, but by a British author who moved from America to, um, no, sorry, from Great Britain to America, or the other way around, an actually American author who went to Great Britain, gathered um, inspiration there, but eventually wrote and published the book back in America. That is also close enough to British, British literature for me to uh, cover it in this lecture. Um, as I said before, this will not cover American literature, Australian literature, Canadian literature, Indian literature, New Zealand literature, or whatever, or English literature from non-English countries. Um, but there will be more lecture series. So uh, this is not the only one. There will be um, an additional one for, for example, American literature. Also because the uh, literary periods are quite different uh, than those. So it would not fit to put them all together. Um, the time span we are dealing with is from around 500 AD to uh, 2021 and ongoing. So uh, for this main part of the literature until here, until the conclusion, um, we will not go further than 2021. I think the last text I'm dealing with is from, uh, I think 2020, I'm not too sure though. Um, but in the ongoing part, of course, is, if, this is, uh, if there's a new video in 2023 where we will talk about a text from 2022, then this is of course not out yet. Um, so this part will be after 2021 as well, probably, but um, we will not uh, have any newer texts than 2021 in this main part of the lecture. What kind of uh, fictional texts are we dealing with? We are dealing with novels, short stories, poems, and plays. So uh, four in general, and I think that's all. If I'm not mistaken, I will correct myself in another lecture if I forgot something right here, right now. Now, so much about the content of this lecture series and how it will proceed over time. Now, this first lecture is a little shorter. Um, as you can imagine, it's just an introductory uh, lecture. Um, but what I want to include now in the end is some background information 
and how we will proceed and how important you are for that as well. Now, of course, I have my texts in mind, um, what I want to go through for these lectures and what I think is important to know about. But uh, in the end, we will have lots of opportunities for interaction. So uh, that means if there are specific texts from a certain period that you think is extremely important and uh, your opinion has to be included in this literary analysis, then please let me know in the comment section below. I will read all the comments and uh, will definitely uh, think about adding what you are wishing for. And apart from the content, if you wish, uh, certain ways of uh, me bringing this knowledge to you or some certain uh, technical things. If you also have technical tips about uh, these presentations or the audio or the video, uh, feel free to add anything you want, anything you think of, anything you wish uh, in the comment section below. This is very, very important for me. Um, I also think I should explain a little more about um, the literary analysis. So uh, I told you now that we will go through these periods and then have two to three texts per period and we will analyze them. But what does that mean, analyze? What is, what is the goal? What will we uh, have in the end after analyzing them? Um, and for that, I will especially go into uh, the following details. We will analyze every piece of literature that we deal with in this lecture. First of all, um, on historical context, or not just historical context, but context in general. So that means historical context, um, context of the literary period, but also content of the author's life, for example, and uh, yeah, the general um, culture. So uh, some aspects of cultural studies might play a role there. We will also analyze a text um, on its uh, themes, its, its main and major, maybe even minor themes. So that will be like the content analysis that we know um, what these texts are about and uh, what are the general messages, uh, so to say, and what kind of atmosphere do these convey. Then we will also deal about the form. So um, how is a text narrated, for example, or if it's a poem, what kind of uh, rhyme scheme is there? Or if it's a play, are there offs or are they not? And um, yeah, just also what, what kind of, um, for example, metaphors are in there. So um, yeah, these kinds of formal aspects. And that is basically it. So a context, themes or content and form. That's the three things we will um, definitely analyze all of them uh, for. And the goal is that in the end, you know at least three or four of each of them. So you will learn at least nine to 12 aspects about all of these books. And this is not just on a, I don't know, on a school level or whatever, but we will yeah, do this on, a, on an academical, uh, academic level. So we will yeah, be a little more critic about all of that, especially the context. And also these three things, content, themes and form, are not only to be well regarded as uh, separate things, but how they are interconnected. Now, what else is there for me to say? Um, I will try not to turn away from the camera and speak as I did just now. Um, thank you for listening. Just uh, let me know what you want to know. And um, yeah, ask questions. And if I have forgotten about something, you will have it either in the video description 
or in the next le uh, lecture. I cannot yet say when the next lecture will be there, but I think in about two to three weeks, again on Tuesday, 6 p.m. German time. Um, now, one last thing about the length. Um, this, as I said before, is a rather short lecture. Now, all the other lectures will be between 45 and 90 minutes, or let's say between 40 and 90 minutes. That is the uh, range that they will most likely be in. So, as I said, um, they will be in, yeah. So, as I said before, these will not be in a nutshell videos, but these will be, yeah, detailed information for all of you out there. Um, may it be that you are studying this and want to gather additional information or you missed the lecture about uh, Victorian literature and want to um, yeah, find out all about it without reading um, well academic literature about it and uh, yeah it's also for those who are not um, involved uh, in this in a in an academic context, but are just in general very interested in literature, especially British literature or literature in general. So um, this is meant to be for everyone and also I want this to be available for everyone. So um, I'm a student of these things, so I have all of them in university, I have my literature and so on. But this is the only way I know about this, because I am in university. But I think uh, there are some very important and very, very interesting uh, things and facts and aspects about this that everybody should be able uh, to know about. So, yeah, feel free to enjoy this lecture. As I said before, tips, hints, wishes and questions in the comment section below or to my mailing address that's in my channel description. Uh, visit jeffmellum.com, that's my blog, you will know everything that's new on there. And uh, if you want to support me, Patreon is the most direct way, or <laughs> buy my books. Okay, thanks and uh, see you in the next lecture. Bye bye.